The purpose of this video is not to teach time series, it's just to give a taste of it. Uh, I'm just going to walk through a script that shows how to plot some time series data. I hope that this at least whets your appetite, or you'll find out that time series data is not for you, and that's fine also. A couple things to note here is that you'll have to pip install plot9, and with plot9 comes this uh, M-I-Z-A-N-I -I package. This is going to be the package I use for plotting. I've included some data in this repository. This is a tourism data. It comes from the Tibble package. This data has quarter, region, state, purpose, and trips. We're just going to filter on one region, one state, and one purpose just to keep the data set manageable. Uh, in future videos, I'll show how to operate um, on, on multiple groups, but we're going to keep this simple for now. So what I want to show here is that the DS column is all it's doing is taking the quarter column and making it a year dash quarter. And this is so that it's easier to feed into the pd.toDateTime function on the next line. The pd.toDateTime function is one of the most common functions you use when you're doing time series analysis. Looks like I need to add a space here between my lines or just select the lines I'm interested in and then send to the terminal. There we go. So the DS column is now a date time object and this makes it easier for other uh, date time functions to work with. You'll see it's a year, month, date. And the final line, I just added year. Lower in the script, I group by year to just look at averages and standard deviation. Um, but I, the main idea is I just wanted to show that there's this uh, ds.dt.something. Um, here I did year, but you can, do, you can do other functions to create things like uh, weekdays or day of week, month, those kinds of things. So this next uh, chunk of code, these are just kind of uh, descriptive statistics. I want to know what the minimum time is or the maximum time. I want to know for what my y is, which is trips here, what the max trips are, what the min trips are, and also the range of my time series. So the minimum date starts in 1998-0101. The max date is 2017-10-1. The max, 242. The min, 68. And then the range is 7,213 days. So that kind of gives me a sense of what is in the data set. First, I'm going to set a theme. This is a uh, plot nine. Uh, this is 538. And I'm going to hand wave over this plotting code. I'll go in a little bit more detail at the bottom. And this gives a nice 538 looking time series plot. I'm going to adjust the axis of dates here. I don't want them pointing up straight like that. I'm going to make them kind of tilt. So to do that, I'm going to go to line 33 and adjust the angle from 90 to 45. Then I'm going to run this chunk again, and you can see that my dates are now tilted. So that's just to give a little um, preview as to how plot 9 works. I think it's really convenient for doing time series plots. All right, so now into some, some more uh, statistics here. So we're just going to group by um, year and get the mean, standard deviation, and median. It's nice to get a sense if you think that there's some seasonality in the data to just kind of look for that. Um, so you group by different time aggregations. Here it's year. Um, lots of times in the real world when you, when you have um, daily data, you'll group by things like Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays to get a sense of the weekly seasonality. But there could be multiple sources of seasonality also. Maybe there's yearly seasonality, monthly seasonality, and daily seasonality. But the purpose here is just to show how to do group by and take a look at things like mean and standard deviation for, a, for some kind of time label. Now, in this uh, chunk from line 45 uh, down to about 49, I'm going to make a moving average column, a lag column, and an exponentially weighted moving average column. So to do this for moving average, there's a function called rolling and the parameter of window, which says how many consecutive or contiguous blocks of time you want to include in your mean. And then for the lag, there's a shift function. And there you just pass how many contigu contiguous blocks of time you want to shift by. 
And then for the exponential moving average, EWM, I think the M stands for mean, I'm taking the lag and then running an exponential moving average on it with a parameter of 0 0.8. That's a parameter to, to control how much you want to exponentially weight your, your time series. Lots of details there. I'm just, again, just gonna hand wave over that. But I do wanna show what this looks like in a plot. I'm gonna write this data, then I'm gonna make a color palette. And in this color palette, I'm gonna have a color for the moving average the lag, and the exponential weighting. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this, these plotting functions in a little bit more detail right now. So this is really similar to ggplot, the grammar of graphics. It's really convenient if you've used ggplot before. If you haven't, um, the idea here is that you're building a plot by layers. So you have ggplot, where your x-axis is defined as ds, your y-axis is trips, and I also want not points only, but also a line to, to represent trips. I want a point and a line for the moving average um, using color palette at index 0. I want a point and a line for the exponential moving average using the color palette at index 1, and a point and a line for the lag 8. And then these are just some more details to get the plotting to look nice for dates or time series data. So let's go ahead and run this. And here's the plot. So I realized that I didn't label what hex number is associated with which color. So really quick, I'm just going to add the colors to the script. I'm going to go to Wolfram Alpha. So EE1D52, this is red. F2D803 is yellow. And 69C9D0 is blue. So this should give you a taste of time series data and time series plotting. At least you have a sense of what time series is and some functions you can use to work with it. And thanks for watching.